please join us. We're ready to get started, and uh, we're going to be starting here very shortly. Thank you to all of you for being here. This is our annual meeting, and it's our opportunity to tell you about our accomplishments in 2015 and to, to all get together as a community and most importantly, to make sure that you know how your support is making a difference for the Pacific Crest Trail, because it's pretty incredible. I'm Liz Bergeron, and I'm the Executive Director and CEO of the Pacific Crest Trail Association. And this is one of my favorite times of the year, because I get to be around people who care enough about the trail to offer your generous support. And um, the purpose, I guess the official purpose of the annual meeting is to certify results of the election of our board members, um, but also to report on our accomplishments, our financial results. And you're going to hear from a lot of different presenters today about, uh, about the work that we're able to accomplish together. So we are going to start right off with our um, kind of give you the, the big picture overview of what we were able to contribute to the trail financially. So these numbers that you see on the screen, this is uh, Pacific Crest Trail Association's contribution and includes a uh, very generous support from our federal agency partners. We're able to take that support combined with the private donations and in total, last year we contributed $5.2 million uh, in caring for the Pacific Crest Trail. And that is uh, very, very significant. You'll hear lots of details later about, um, about specifics, about projects, and about impacts. Um, we have a number of different presenters, like I said, but also uh, you know, in our audience today, we have members, donors, hikers, horseback riders, trail maintainers, agency partners. It's an amazing community, and that's really what it takes. So some of the impacts, when we talk about impacts, you know, we talk about the, the number of acres that we protected, the number of miles that we maintain. And, you know, on the one hand, it was a great year for the trail in terms of accomplishments. And um, on the other hand, it was a terrible year when you consider the impacts of fire and mudslides and other threats to the trail experience. But here's a few of the highlights in terms of the actual numbers. Um, 1,500 miles of trail either maintained or reconstructed. and uh, Last year, we issued a record number of permits for people who are out there using the trail. Now, overall, our financial results were very positive. Um, revenues exceeded expenses by $230,000. And in addition to that, we do a very good job at the uh, Pacific Crest Trail Association of managing our expenses to our budget. And so our surplus last year was largely due to a gift that we received from somebody who included us in their will. And so the board and staff met to talk about the best use of the surplus, and we decided that the best use was to add that to a reserve. And I can tell you, after being with the organization for almost 15 years, it's uh, really wonderful to be in a place where we can actually think about building a reserve. It's, uh, it's made a huge difference for us um, in terms of having some financial stability and um, also knowing that there is some uh, funds there for future needs. So that's what we decided to do with the surplus. And um, in addition to that, we were able to uh, spend a little bit more on trail programs in 2015 than we did in 2014. Now, it might not feel that way to people who are out there actually doing the work because there's always more work to be done. But um, we, I mean, that is our goal, right, is everything that we're doing has a direct impact on the trail and the work that we do um, for the trail. Another important piece of uh, the work that we're doing is our strategic plan. 
So we are in the third year of a four-year strategic plan. It takes us through the end of 2017. And um, this is not intended for you to read this slide. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, to give you an idea of one of the uh, reports that we use to um, inform the board of specific progress on that plan. And throughout today's presentation, you're going to see a reference to our strategic plan. We have seven goals, uh, things like land protection, trail maintenance, awareness, fundraising. And we use this plan to guide our work and to make sure that we are staying on track and keeping in mind the vision that we have for a uh, you know, permanently protected and fully maintained Pacific Crest Trail. We take our plan seriously, and the board uses this plan to monitor our progress. And you'll see uh, there are things on here like um, you know, number of trail maintenance volunteer hours, number of trail maintained annually, uh, you know, number of acres protected. And we actually have 25 of these measurements that we looked at. And we had a session this morning with some staff and our board, and we actually went over our strategic plan in a little bit more detail. And it was, uh, it was pretty exciting because we've made, we've had a strategic plan for many, many years now and it seems as though with this current plan, we have made just uh, significant progress. Our high-level goals haven't changed much because, and that's, that really reflects the nature of our work. It's a long-term project to take care of the Pacific Crest Trail. So keeping those goals in front of us at all times is the key to uh, making that happen and making some real progress. So now it's my pleasure to uh, turn this over to John Crawford. Thank you, Liz, and welcome all. It's a pleasure to see you here again. It's uh, so edifying to me to see how many people are involved in the trail and in these numbers and so forth. I want to report on our election results. Uh, we have two new directors that have been voted in by the membership, Priscilla Franco, who after a 27-year uh, career with the Forest Service, retired as district ranger in the Mount Shasta area, and Ken Schwartz, from, and Priscilla still lives in the Mount Shasta area, and Ken Schwartz, a uh, dentist, retired in Orange County, who's been associated with, the, with PCTA for eight, ten years in Hike the Hill and and other activities, and uh, a very important contributor to us. I've uh, been elected to a second term on the board, and third term for Janice Gilbert and John Hoffnagel. So thank you for those of you who sent your responses in for your support, and um, we're looking forward to, other, to additional terms of service. If I could have the board members present stand, uh, I'd like to introduce you uh, briefly. I, I'm not going to go around. I, I, well, I will. It's Scott Jacobs Meyer, <laughs> Jim Newman, Don Ralphs, Barney Mann, immediate past chair. There's Ken Schwartz, one of the new directors, Priscilla here in the middle, uh, Tim McGuire, and John Hoffnagel. And hey, Chip. You and I are challenged in that regard, aren't we? <laughs> standing behind Barney. Thank you, though, for, for uh, standing. Um, a little bit of a sad note for me, uh, you see here under Eric Ryback's, after Eric Ryback's name, that he is leaving the board. And he occupies a very special place in, in my heart and my journey on the trail, and for many of us. Um, anybody recognize this? 1970, high adventure of Eric Ryback. He was the first through hiker on the trail, wrote a book about it, participated in the organiz organization of the uh, trail system in 1971. I read it as a high school senior and said, I'm going to do the trail someday. I'm sorry that he's not here in one way, but not in another, because I'm even choking up a bit. And if he were here, <laughs> it would be a cry fest, I'm afraid. And I didn't bring any, any, uh, any uh, Kleenexes. But he's been very, very important to the history of the trail and inspiring a lot of people, especially of my generation, to someday hike it. And so we're really sad to see him going, leaving the, uh, the board, but you know, you move on. He said in my 
in my book, wrote in my book, may your vision of life be seen from the top of a mountain. And thank you all for helping me have that vision of life for the thousands of people, 4,400 uh, permits issued this year, and that's just people that hike 500 miles or more. Thousands and thousands of people had this chance to have this vision of life from a high spot, a wonderful spot. And you ready? You, you make a very good point. Eric Ryback, thank you for, thank you for saying that. Uh, Eric Ryback, for years, has sponsored the medals program. And I don't know how many of you have received a medal or seen them. They're, well, maybe they're not that big, but they're about this big. They are heavy. They are gorgeous. They are so much better than a marathon medal. And Eric, <laughs> and deservedly, right? How many marathons is it? It's 100 marathons or something. Uh, Eric has sponsored this program for, for years and years from his own pocket. And it's a wonderful gift. And I'm going to get mine at the end of the summer if things work out well. So. <laughs> Anyway, next up, somebody else also very, very important to the trail and her commitment. Wait a minute, I had a... Sure. I don't have that information. Does... We can get it for you, though. Yeah. And up next is Beth Boyce from the Forest Service. So I'm here today to first say thank you. This is the community that takes care of the trail, and we are full of passion and commitment, and it spans the scope of volunteers, citizen stewards, agency representatives, PCTA staff, board members. You all are the people that make the difference. And so I really want to start with just thanking you. You see that big number up there? 96,000, you'll hear that it's actually a little bit more than that later. But in terms of service to our country and to protecting this experience, you are the people that make that difference. So I really want to just start with a thank you. I'm gonna share with you a few things I'm really excited about that happened this past year. We continue to have some fabulous trail skills colleges and trainings. This is a cross-cut saw. Uh, walk-in uh, for a field exercise. And then there's the environmental charter high school kids out, oh, shouldn't say kids, young adults, um, out of Los Angeles. And this program of bringing these students first to the field and to the PCT, and second to our nation's capital to um, learn what goes on at the highest level of government and to articulate what it, the trail means to them, to our agency leaders and their congressional representatives is really one of the neatest things I've seen in my career. And so I thank PCTA and Liz, Mandy Brewer, the principal, um, Anitra Cass, the regional rep who's worked with these students, Sandy Mann, who chaperones these students. And what you need to know is when they talk about the trail, their voice says, not only that it's important, but it's relevant to them today at age 16, 17, and 18. And really, as we think about the future of the trail, that's where it's at. So the next picture I love, because it's the chief of the Forest Service so excited about their presentation that he's taking a selfie with them, <laughs> right? So big thank you to the 96,000 volunteer hours and to PCTA staff and board for really doing a good job of helping us take care of the trail. Um, another big planning effort is the three forest plans under revision. Uh, this Inyo, Sierra, and Sequoia National Forest started and had draft plans out, um, or the, I'm sorry, had an assessment period, and the draft plans will be out in May. And so I know that there will be a lot of interest in terms of what does it say about the PCT, but you need to know that it's kind of landmark work in terms of defining how to take care of the trail and the trail corridor. So we've talked about the trail as a linear feature, but we haven't really talked about anything beyond the 36 inches of trail tread. And so this will be the first time the Forest Service will have planning in place that talks about the area around. 
and I'm putting the 2016 there because I know some of you are so tired of hearing that it's coming that I want to be clear on which year it's coming. <laughs> okay, um, Liz hit on impacts, right? Uh, fire, drought, mudslides, big efforts. Um, it didn't talk about the PCT in this, but you need to know that was the October storm that closed the PCT in Tehachapi. Actually, it didn't close it, it just buried it under six feet of mud, right? So thinking about how to get the trail back open, and some of those drainages ran really hard. So um, it has been an effort. We're working with federal highways in terms of getting some IRFA funding, um, as well as with the BLM. Um, and PCTA is a big, we'll take questions at the end. Um, uh, fires, we had the lake fire last year. The Okanagan Wenatchee had such a big fire that it was called a complex. Um, we're still recovering from the mountain fire and the powerhouse fire, all of which have closures. You need to know that our first priority is getting the trail open and safe for hikers and equestrians. I wanted to, I introduced you last year to these two guys. This is Greg and Jules. They are PCT through hikers that um, are also crest runners. And they are stationed on the Cleveland National Forest. They will have a third join them um, whose name is Brandon. And they will be working, talking to hikers as they start their journey north. And will be doing some monitoring for us in terms of um, visitor use impacts. Welcome to summer. Let's go hiking. <laughs> so with that, I'll introduce Mark Conley. He is um, my colleague at the BLM. He is a great supporter of the trail, and thank you for your time. Good afternoon. Mark Conley from the Bureau of Land Management here in the California State Office in Sacramento. And I also want to thank everyone that's here today and all the volunteers. And I just want to, oops, wrong way. <laughs> to start with a success story. <clears throat> the southern terminus in Campo was refurbished uh, with efforts from the Pacific Crest Trail Association. And it was over a two year effort. Uh, lots of challenges, border issues, potential relocation of the trail, power line issues, and we just didn't quite know how to proceed, but with the assistance from the Pacific Crest Trail Association, and I'd specifically like to mention Jennifer Tripp and Anitra Cass for their leadership, this project probably wouldn't have happened. It just took a tremendous amount of tenacity to make it happen, and also the volunteers of the Pacific Crest Trail Association that did all the work. And it's a beautiful refurbishment at the southern terminus at Campo. And eventually, we may relocate the trail to an optimal location review. We are working on that. But again, we just didn't think we could leave that monument in such bad shape, the start of the trail for so many hikers, that we really wanted to get this done and refurbished. And again, the efforts of the association and all the volunteers, and it's a beautiful work, piece of work that's been done. So many thanks to all the volunteers that helped with this project and to make it a success. There's a couple, some personnel issues that I thought would be important to mention um, here at the Bureau of Land Management. Mike Poole, our former California State Director, is now a um, senior advisor to the director, Neil Cornsey. I mention this because he's a strong advocate for the Pacific Crest Trail. I spoke with him yesterday on our newest national monument, the Sand to Snow National Monument, and of course he was asking, well, what about the Pacific Crest Trail? So anyways, it's very great to have him in the Washington office as an advocate for us as we move forward. Another long-term advocate for the BLM, Jim Kenna, our former state director, he retired, and he was also a field manager in the Palm Springs field office and quite engaged in the Pacific Crest Trail and a strong advocate, which is really helpful, especially when we need funding and logistics in this time of uh, challenging budgets. And uh, we have our newest state uh, director, Jerry Perez, 
he worked in, as the Oregon State Office Director, State Director for BLM, and he transferred here and just starting his tenure. But again, I think he'll be a very strong advocate for the work that we need to do on the Pacific Crest Trail. I would be remiss if I didn't mention one of the big landscape level plans, the Desert Renewable Energy Conservation Plan. It's in its final stages, and we are going to issue a record of decision. I only mention this because of the work that the Pacific Crest Trail Association did and commented and provided extensive uh, both verbal comments and written comments, and it really helped us protect the trail and make it a higher priority within the DRECP planning area. It's a huge landscape level plan. And we heard about all the threats to the trail. Just taking a look at Highway 58 and lots of damage to the trail and the Tehachapi area, one of our most challenging parts of the trail to manage for BLM and the Pacific Crest Trail Association. Uh, the good news, we were successful in getting, uh, you heard from the Federal Highway Administration, we just heard that we received $75,000 to help with the management of the maintenance, reconstruction of the Pacific Crest Trail. So really great news, it wouldn't have happened without the support of the Pacific Crest Trail Association. And lastly, we have some new national monuments that have been designated by, uh, through executive order by President Obama. Uh, the Mojave Trails National Monument uh, near Needles, uh, 1.6 million acres. The Castle Mountain National Monument, which is a uh, in holding within the East Mojave, uh, the Mojave Preserve Na uh, National Monument uh, managed by the National Park Service. <laughs> And the one that's most critical to the Pacific Crest Trail is the Sand to Snow National Monument, 155,000 acres, and the PCT traverses through most of the Sand to Snow National Monument. There will be a dedication ceremony next, uh, next month hosted by the Wildlands Conservancy, and I'm, I'm sure we'll highlight the Pacific Crest Trail and the good work of the Pacific Crest Trail Association. But thank you again for all your volunteer efforts and work, hard work on behalf of the Pacific Crest Trail. It's really great to uh, look back and see our accomplishments so many times with crisis management or something we have to get done in a short amount of time. And it's good to look back and see all the good work that's been done on behalf of the trail. Thanks for having me. And I'd like to turn it over. Hi, I'm Megan Wargo. I'm the Director of Land Protection for the Pacific Crest Trail Association. So today I'd like to share with you some of the highlights from our land protection program from 2015 and talk a little bit about what we're going to be working on for 2016. So in 2015, nearly $1.5 million were spent of federal land and water conservation funding to acquire 1,132 acres of land along the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, these acquisitions included 224 acres of inholdings within the San Gregorio National uh, Wilderness Area in Southern California and 907 acres in Central Washington. Um, we also worked closely with our partners at the Land and Water Conservation Fund Coalition to fight for permanent reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Um, we didn't receive that permanent reauthorization, but we did get an extension of the program for three additional years. Along with that, we secured $3.2 million in that federal land and water conservation funding for acquisitions along the PCT in the federal fiscal year 2016. So that's the year we're in now. Uh, PCTA implemented a geographic information system we acquired software through ESRI's ARC GIS program to begin building a GIS system that's gonna allow us to track information about the private parcels that are along the trail and be able to create maps to present to 
leaders that are making decisions about where this money goes for land protection um, as to what opportunities are out there and what lands are important to protect. And uh, finally, we launched our Land Protection Advisory Council. And this is a very exciting group of highly qualified, uh, we've got nine volunteers and three staff members. This group includes experienced land conservationists, lawyers, retired agency personnel, business members, entrepreneurs, um, and it's, it's a group that really brings a lot of diverse skills that are going to allow us to be really strategic about how we move forward in land protection along the trail. So I'm happy that today I can report to you a really early success we've had in 2016. Uh, the Tahoe National Forest acquired 406 acres with the assistance of the Trust for Public Land and the Truckee Donner Land Trust in March of this year. Uh, the property not only includes the Pacific Crest Trail, which goes through the northeastern corner of the property, but the entire 406 acres are within the viewshed of the trail. Um, the acquisition provides that crucial viewshed, but it also opens up an opportunity to build a new trailhead. Um, right off of Interstate 80 near the Donner Summit area. So a really critical acquisition. and We're so excited to have partners that are working on these types of projects. Permanent protection along the PCT has been accomplished private parcel by private parcel with the partnership of federal agencies and a number of nonprofit organizations. As PCTA expands our land protection program, we're looking to continue to strengthen those partnerships. Um, we're, not, we're not taking over and doing the work those partners were already doing. We're looking to collaborate with them to increase the capacity along the entire trail. And so right now, uh, PCTA and our other uh, nonprofit and federal partners are working on a number of projects that span the whole length of the trail. Uh, it affects over 20,000 acres, and this includes uh, six projects in the state of Washington, two in Oregon and 12 in California. So in addition to that work that our partners are doing, as PCTA is expanding our land protection program, one of the things we're looking to do is actually take a leading role in some of these land acquisition opportunities. Um, we are right now leading negotiations to purchase uh, options on three properties that total 11,147 acres and will impact nearly 19 miles of the trail. So some really exciting projects and we really look forward to sharing more with you about those projects as the year unfolds. And uh, with that, I would like to turn it over to Mike Dawson, PCTA's Trail Operations Director. Hi, I'm Mike Dawson, I'm the Trail Operations Director for PCTA, and I'd like to get right into, oops, pressing the right button. <laughs> um, so uh, trail protection is uh, a lot of the work that we do with federal agencies and uh, with various planning processes to deal with ongoing threats on the trail. Uh, one of the things that I like to say about the Trail Protection Program is that success is indicated by what you don't see. And uh, so uh, there are all sorts of things proposed along the trail that could have a negative uh, impact on the trail. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, it's everything from the clear cut you don't see to the new road that you don't see uh, to the power line you don't see. So. Um, and this is hopefully what you do see. So I want everybody to take a look at this gorgeous uh, photo. It is somewhere between uh, Hart's Pass and uh, Rainy Pass in the North Cascades. And think about the beauty of this place and deal with this. <laughs> so um, so uh, we had a, a proposal that was put out. Uh, first thing they, that, that a proposal from a federal agency does is that they uh, put out scoping to see what people think generally about a proposal. And uh, this proposal is for off-base helicopter training um, just in that landscape that you saw in the last slide. And uh, this was, was uh, proposed um, 
There was a lot of discussion. So this is an authorization 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, emphasizing night operations with that equipment. Tasks could include following the contours of the earth as low as 25 feet above the highest obstacle. So think about that. At 2 a.m., <laughs> camped somewhere deep uh, between the Pesaten Wilderness and the Henry M. Jackson Wilderness uh, to, to encounter this. Yep. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. So uh, very difficult, uh, 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 difficult situation. PCTA had a short amount of time to, uh, to make some comments on this, uh, which we did. The comments that the agency, uh, in, in this case, doing, doing this planning process is the United States Army, not our regular partners in the Forest Service or the Park Service. And so um, uh, they, they uh, went forward with this in this landscape. And what I want to read to you is a little news release from the News Tribune in Tacoma, Washington. Uh, this is on April 8th, so this is breaking news. Joint Base Lewis McCord is putting a controversial helicopter training proposal back in the hangar. While it took... <laughs> They will look for high altitude sites in the state where aviation crews can train without disrupt, disrupting hikers and campers. And so I thought that this was just something really up to date and uh, you know, that, that really kind of gives you that idea of success is, is what you don't see. So other, other things going on. So 25% of all PCTA's volunteer hours were accomplished with youth crew programs. Um, uh, the American Conservation Experience, ACE, their executive director is here with us today, um, put in over 10,000 hours on four BLM districts and eight national forests this year. Um, the National Civilian Community Corps put in time. Environmental Charter High School, you saw Beth uh, with a picture of them in suits and ties in the Capitol, but also out on the trail working, working both the high school and the middle school. Uh, forest Youth Success in, in Southern Washington, a, project, a Forest Service funded project uh, to put kids out in, the, out in the woods to work. So how do we get all this done? 472 agency meetings, uh, 1,482 miles of, of trail maintenance, lots of reconstruction, 1,800 volunteers. Uh, lots of hours. Beth showed you uh, some, some, uh, some hours before. Here's a breakdown of where those hours were spent, the work, kind of work that we were doing. So locally based volunteer groups. The groups on this page are part and parcel of PCTA. They are PCTA. So um, these are hours put in by these various groups. Uh, each of the groups has a particular geographic area that they work in, and uh, so a, an enormously successful year, enormously successful. So uh, we want those folks to, to be efficient and effective and safe. So 13 SAW trainings and certifications, 7 first aid and CPR trainings, 17 trail skills college trainings. And Last but not least, partnerships. So beyond the groups that are directly a part of PCTA, we have lots of partners who uh, may have a wider mission but are a part of our community to take care of the trail. And uh, so uh, we had the Pacific Northwest Tra uh, Trail Association this year with over 500 hours, the Tahoe Rim Trail Association with 1,100 hours, Washington Trails Association for 3,800 hours, and then there's the uh, backcountry horsemen. Um, all three state groups have uh, close working relationships with us. They are integrated directly with an enormous number of our projects in a year, packing crews deep into the backcountry, letting us get work done that we wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise be possible. So um, it's been a great year. We've accomplished a lot, and we're ready for 2016.
with that, I'll hand this over to our director of philanthropy. Hello, everyone. As you can see, this is titled The Fundraising Report, but I think it's actually more accurate to call this the Gratitude Report. Fundraising is the activities that PCTA does to ask you for your support. But what's really special here today is how generously you have all responded because of your passion for the Pacific Crest Trail. So it's my honor to say thank you. Many thanks to all of you for your support and for coming to our event today. Oh, thank you again. All right, so you've been hearing a lot today about, how the diff uh, about the difference that your gifts are making for the trail. With your support, we've been getting all of these volunteers out there to help us with the trail maintenance. We're protecting the wilderness experience that makes the Pacific Crest Trail such a special place. And we've been providing resources to all the hikers, the equestrians, the people who want to learn more about getting out on the trail. And 2015 was our strongest year ever. As Liz mentioned earlier, you donated $2.3 million in private donations for the trail. And it's no coincidence that we're able to do more for the trail each year. It's because your generosity allows us to grow our programs and do more all the time. There are many ways that you give to the PCTA and to the trail. Membership donations are at the heart of, of our donation program, and by joining and renewing each year, you are, you're really helping out with that amount of money that we can put to work each year. And many of you are also going that extra step and doubling your giving through your employee matching gifts programs, so thank you for taking the time to do that. We also want to thank all of our corporate partners and our business supporters who give to the trail, and they are also helping to spread the message about the PCTA to their customers. We want to thank all the foundations that give grants to support our work. And also, you can support the trail when you shop at the store, which is, the fun, is uh, fun and we'll have a store next door. And also, we want to thank our Legacy Society members who have included the PCTA in their estate plans. Um, so we actually, in 2015, we were honored to receive a generous bequest of $265,000 from a longtime member, Cyril Whitney, who passed away one year ago today, or almost today. He was a member since 1999, and his most joyous times growing up were the years in the different seasons of the East Coast. It brought him an early, in, at an early age to have be really in touch with nature, and he brought that love of nature to Berkeley when he settled there after graduating from Harvard with his degree in computer psychology. And this love of nature became part of his life for 70 years, and he passed along that legacy when he left this generous bequest to support the PCT. So our membership report, we are now up to 11,600 members. And uh, this growing membership is a stronger voice for the trail. Uh, the, we have 18% more members than we did in 2014. So many more people are learning about the trail, learning about our work, and joining. We recruited 4,400 new members last year. And I know there are several of you here today that are recent new members. And we want to say thank you for joining. Thanks for coming. And welcome to PCTA. You can also see that we have a really broad support uh, across the world. Now, we have 50 states, the District Colum of Columbia, and 31 foreign countries in, represented in our membership. And all of our members are our ambassadors. When you share your excitement about the trail, you, you can bring others to the cause. And finally, I just want to say, from all of us who work on behalf of the PCT, Please know how much you inspire us. We are honored that you give generously to the trail. We are touched by your stories of why the PCT matters in your lives. And every day, you are a part of our team, and we couldn't do our work without you. All who visit the trail and all who find inspiration from the trail are benefiting from your gifts. 
So thank you again for all that you do to protect, preserve, and promote the Pacific Crest Trail. And I'll turn it over to Liz. So we have a, a few more highlights of our year. I know it's a lot of information, but when you think about a trail that's uh, 2,650 miles long, on any given day, there, there's a lot going on. And one of the other very important parts of our work is the information that we provide to people who are interested in getting out and using the trail or learning more about the trail itself. And this is, uh, of course, our website nowadays is really our window to the world. And it's such a great tool to be able to provide information. I remember when I first started at PCTA, our website in those days was very, very different than what we have today. And, um, but one day, it went down. And our phone started ringing off the hook. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine what that would be like today. Um, this page that I'm showing you here, it's actually a collection of pages. It's called Discover the Trail. So it's the main place where people go when they want information on uh, trip planning. And we had half a million visitors to this page in 2014. Well, in 2015, we had 1.2 million visitors to this page. So we are providing a lot of information. There are, um, there's a lot of people interested in the Pacific Crest Trail, and I am, um, I'm really glad because if we don't have people interested in the trail, if we don't have people who love the trail, we're not going to be able to, uh, to get the support that the trail needs. So our website is an incredible tool. We also had a, a pretty big year when it comes to media inquiries, and a lot of this was fueled by the movie Wild, which showed right at the end, or came out right at the end of 2014. So we actually, we responded to 123 media inquiries, which resulted in over 100 media placements, and included some of these uh, major publications as uh, as well as uh, we had a, a national, national TV news report and some, uh, some local TV, local radio. A great way to, to get the word out. And as I mentioned earlier, we issued uh, about 4,500 permits to trail users from 34 countries. And in those 34 countries, we actually, we figured we had about 450 people who had international addresses in our list of um, people requesting a permit. The other big accomplishment in 2015 is we made some pretty significant changes to the process for permits. Um, and we streamlined the application process as well as implemented a, uh, a limit of issuing 50 permits per day for per day for people who were starting at the, uh, the southern terminus. So it was a big change that took place last year. We have another exciting project that we did a lot of work on last year. And uh, you are going to be among the first to see this next slide. And that is a picture of the new Pacific Crest Trail book that will be coming out in October. Uh, this is being published by Rizzoli and Pacific Crest Trail Association. It's going to be a beautiful book. There's more than 300 beautiful photos, and a lot of these photos are from our own PCT community members. Um, these are people who have participated in the photo contest, and you've seen many of the, their photos in the calendar and in the Communicator magazine. Uh, wonderful stories of people, visionaries, people who helped make the trail happen. Uh, Pacific Crest Trail Association will benefit from the proceeds, and two of our very own authored this book, and I'd like them to, uh, to stand. It's uh, Mark Larrabee, Mark's in the back, and uh, <laughs> Barney Mann.
Yes, so excited that we had uh, Mark and Barney to author this book. Uh, I've read it and loved it. It's, it's just um, great stories, and um, in the back of the book, we've highlighted all the wilderness areas that the trail goes through, and um, the photography is incredible. Next, what I'd like to do is just say a, a thank you to our staff. So those of you who are sitting, or if you could please stand, and those of you in the back of the room, if you could please uh, wave. It's, it's um, you know, one of the most uh, dedicated and committed group of people that I've ever worked with, and it's a pleasure to, to be a part. And, uh, you know, we all, like you that are here today, we all love what we do, and it's because the Pacific Crest Trail is so powerful, and, you know, it's, it's bigger than all of us, and, and that's what it takes to, uh, to take care of something like this. Now, this photo was actually taken on a staff retreat. We do get together once a year. And this last year, we decided that we would head over to the coast. So we always enjoy an outing. And um, there was some talk on this day. So we, we get a lot of uh, people referring to our trail as the Pacific Coast Trail. <laughs> So uh, we thought maybe we should just become the Pacific Coast Trail Association and uh, take care of that problem. But you know, that's just a joke. We actually had a volunteer who for, for a quite a, a long period of time, right after Wild came out, it was her job to um, find those incidents when uh, the media referred to it as the Pacific Coast Trail. And uh, we went back and corrected them. And I think it's really helped um, um, with, the, with that situation. But. Anyway, so that concludes our formal presentation. We are going to um, allow time for questions. Before we do that, I would like to just remind you that immediately following this, we are going to have an open house. It is in the building next door. Uh, just walk out the front door, turn to your left. There's all kinds of signage, and there will be people directing you. So please, I hope you can join us next door uh, for our open house and uh, refreshments. And um, now it's time to take questions. Yes, Gordy. So thank you, Gordy. Um, <clears throat> So Don Tui is a longtime volunteer of PCTA, and so, you know, we talked a lot about this because um, Don always came to the open house or to the annual meeting and always asked about Tone Ranch. So Don passed away about a year ago um, in 2015, and and couldn't be here today. And you know, at one point, I um, I was going to put a slide in here and. I just, uh, I got a little busy prior to getting ready for this and I forgot to put the slide in here, but, uh, so we're prepared to answer that question um, in memory of Don. So, who would like to answer that question, Beth or Mike? <laughs> It's really pretty remarkable how, what a legacy Don left with us, right? So, um, so I appreciate the emotion. And um, I think as we talk about Tejon Ranch, you need to know it's one of the most important things for a large scale improvement to the PCT. Um, it's also probably one of the more complicated things I've worked on in a long time. And it precedes me in terms of time we've worked on it, right? And so last year we talked about what had happened, um, which was that Tahoe Ranch and Tahoe Ranch Conservancy came into an agreement and put conservation easements on the land that the trail will go through. And we have, um, within those conservation easements, the US Forest Service has a right for the trail to go through it. So what's missing to make this real is a trail easement. And we, um, we're kind of stalled out on that right now. 
And so you need to know that we've regrouped, we've uh, reached out to some folks that we think can help us make things move forward. Um, I don't have anything that makes me think we aren't going, that we're in a negative place, but it really is one of those things that in terms of development, the nexus for Tahone to be interested in the trail going onto their property was um, because of the real estate development that they were proposing. And as our real estate um, development slowed, the interest and ability to move that forward slowed as well. So the good news is the conservation's in place, conservation easement is in place already. So we're secure in that and that we are working towards um, getting the trail easement in place. Thank you, Beth. Definitely one of those long-term projects. And I think about the visionaries, you know, in the, the book that I just read. And, you know, that's what it takes. It takes that persistence and um, continuing to, uh, to be at the table. Next question, yes. Is, um, I would encourage people to take the hike to Sonoma and have been in several hikes uh, with this sponsor. Uh -huh. And uh, they're very knowledgeable, and uh, it's a beautiful area up there. I mean, up and down the Blue Ridge area, it's just beautiful. A lot of wildlife, a lot of mountain lions, a lot of boars, but good, very knowledgeable people. And, and uh, Scott Pippen's guy, they have hikes all now through August and flower watching and stuff. So. Wouldn't hurt to take a little hike and so just see the land. And where can we find out about those it's, hikes? They have a Tion Conservancy page. Okay, Tahoe and, Ranch uh, Conservancy. Yeah, so Great. It's, it's positive experience for the land that's being acquired. Yeah, it's a beautiful area. Thank you. Yes, Michael. Sam, what are a couple of key things that you would particularly remember from the book? Other than the movie, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the movie. Um, Hmm. Yeah. So, Teresa, why don't you come up and answer that question? I didn't, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. To the you, would you like me to repeat the question? Yeah. Okay. I would. Actually. Thank you. Um, so, the question is, what do we attribute the membership growth and the uh, the new members, the 4,500 new members that we recruited in 2015 to? Would you like to answer that question? Well, so, Teresa, you can introduce yourself. I'm uh, Teresa Feith. I'm the Chief Financial Administrative Officer for the Pacific Crest Trail Association. I don't think I'm the best person to answer this question because I think Andy probably knows better. But um, we have a lot of people joining through the permits. Uh, so that's where a lot of the new members are coming from. We also do direct mail acquisition. And there's just more awareness of the trail right now. So there's an increase in membership. Definitely increased awareness about the PCT. Yes, Joe. Does the acquire land, who actually ends up holding that land? So the question is, when we acquire land, who ends up holding that land? And um, I mean, the, the ultimate goal is to have that land in public ownership. So for the Pacific Crest Trail, that would mean the US Forest Service, the Bureau of Land Management, maybe National Park Service, but I think most of that land's been taken care of. So, the, of that so the, the Pacific Crest Trail Association, we do not intend to hold land permanently. We may end up holding land temporarily until we can uh, transfer that land to uh, one of the federal land management agencies. Another question. Yes, Alice. How many permits have you issued for hikers and equestrians so far this year? So we, um, we issue permits on behalf of the Forest Service. So I am going to ask Beth to uh, speak to this question for this year. Jack Pearson. I don't know. Jack answers first. Uh, OK. All right. Almost at Come here, Jack. Uh, David, my coworker who also works on permits, is not here right now. We're we're about at the same number as last year, so over four thousand. Yeah. Long distance hikers, five hundred miles or more in a single trip. 
And then in context, we don't know the utilization rate and we have no idea how many people are out hiking because there's hundreds of thousands of other people. All right, another question? Yes, I think. For lands that are transferred to the Forest Service, mm -hmm. what, what would keep Congress from saying, oh, this is a good place for an oil well or uh, some other use that, uh, are there restrictions, covenants of any kind? Come on up, Beth. <laughs> we need to repeat that question, Teresa, or do you think we got it? I think we got it. So I have to start with the previous question. Liz had asked me to take care of the permit question, so you need to know that's what that dance was right there. Um, so I have a lot of experience in terms of uh, permit numbers and things from the past, um, but it's such a real-time thing for a PCTA that that's why Jack and I are working really closely together as well. But to your question, um, the most important thing about protecting the trail is to have good land management planning in place. And so for um, the trail as it goes through federal lands, any of the planning processes s will speak to the trail if it's within the scope of where they're planning. So whether it's a wilderness plan for Yosemite National Park or whether it's a um, DRECP plan that um, Mark was talking about for BLM lands or for the um, three forest plans that are under revision, all of them talk about the trail and what the uses are um, allowed. And they talk about them in different ways, so it's not a simple answer to a question, but things like, should you allow timber harvest? Should you allow um, competitive event races? Should you allow mining? Should you um, protect the visual quality of the experience or all things that are, can be addressed in planning? And then for the lands that are acquired, um, Typically what happens is that the federal agencies, once they manage them, adopt the same PCT management that they have in the surrounding landscape. The follow-on yeah, question thing that, for Let Beth. me just add something. The only thing that I would add to, um, to what Beth shared with us is that, I mean, an important role that Pacific Crest Trail Association plays is to try to stay on top of those types of activities and make sure that people are aware, that the agencies are aware that the Pacific Crest Trail is being impacted. Yes. And there's there's some um, ongoing active political context to this particular question about uh, the, the, the long-term uh, protection of the trail. Mm -hmm. We saw in the Maller uh, Wildlife Refuge um, difficulties, let's call them, and there's also been motions in Nevada to devolve BLM and Forest Service lands back to private ownership um, at the or state level ownership, it, which would mean that they want to use it for some more exploitive technologies, and I can think there's plenty of places on the PCT that would be really good for wind generation. So there's, there's competing priorities right now. And so this is a very important uh, question that, that I would like to see continued attention to. Mm -hmm. So the, um, I, I don't know if you remember the part of the presentation. Well, actually, I think Mike touched on it, Mark touched on it, and Beth did as well. It, it is an important part of the work that we do. And I think it's also, um, for the, uh, I'd say that maybe the larger population of people interested in the PCT, the larger membership, I think it's sometimes difficult to explain that part of our work, but it's a very important piece of the work that we do. We take it very seriously. All right. Any other questions? Well, I know that uh, part of the reason you're all here is to get to interact with each other, meet other PCT enthusiasts, and we have a nice setup next door, refreshments, and we're also going to be giving away some great prizes that have been donated. So make sure you get your door prize tickets, and I hope to get a chance to talk with, uh, with many of you next door. So thanks again for coming, and thanks also for your support of our important work for the Pacific Crest Trail.